على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا عن أبي قتادة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني لا أدخل في الصلاة وأنا أريد إطالتها فاسمع بكاء الصبي فأتجوز في صلاتي مما أعلم من شدة وجد أمه من بكائه هذا أبو قتادة رضي الله عنه سلوى يتكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نشاهد في المعياء كي من نماز شروع کرتا ہوں اور میرا ارادہ کچھ طویل پڑھنے کا ہوتا ہے پھر میں کسی بچے کے رونی کی آواز سن لیتا ہوں تو نماز میں اختصار کر دیتا ہوں کیونکہ میں جانتا ہوں کہ اس کے رونی کی آواز سے اس کی ماں کا دل کتنا زیادہ پریشان ہوگا It is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Qatada Ansari رضی اللہ عنہ The Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said that it is sometimes that I start the salah and my I intend to make it a little long I need I intend to read something long then I listen I hear the voice of a child crying so I shorten the salah because I know that because of that crying his mother's heart will be very much perturbed very uh, troubled تو یہ بھی سننا ہے کہ حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی جس طرح سے اس حدیث سے بتایا کہ اگر کبھی ایسا معلوم ہو جائے کہ کسی ماں کے رونے کا کسی ماں کی بچے کے رونے کی آواز آئے تو اس میں نماز کو مختصر کر دینا یہ مصنوع عمل ہے ٹو شارٹن دا صلاح ٹو شارٹن یا قرآت وین یو لسن دیٹ چائلڈ از کرائنگ ٹو کمفرٹ دا مدر اور ٹو بی ایبل ٹو لیٹ دا مدر گو اینڈ کمفرٹ دا چائلڈ If you shorten the salah, that is also sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An anasin qal, ma salaytu wara'a imamin, qaddu akhaffa salatan, wala atamma salatan, min al-nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa in kana la yasma'u buka'a al-sabiyyi, fa yukhaffifu makhafata, an tuftana ummuh. رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے صحابی حد انس رضی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے روایت ہے فرماتے ہیں میں نے کبھی کسی امام کے پیچھے ایسی نواز نہیں پڑھی جو رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نواز سے زیادہ حلقی اور ساتھ ہی مکمل بھی ہو اور ایسا ہوتا تھا کہ نواز پڑھانے کی حالت میں کسی بچے کی رونی کی آواز آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سن لیتے تو نواز کو مختصر اور حلقہ فرما دیتے اس خطرے کی وجہ سے کہ اس کی امام بے چین ہو Sayyidina Anas رضی اللہ عنہ has narrated that I have never read salah behind any imam who would make salah lighter and at the same time very complete, very perfect like the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم or more than the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and it would be sometimes that the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم would hear the voice of a child crying and he would shorten the salah and make it light thinking that his mother would not be perturbed. نماز کے مکمل ہونے کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ نماز کے ارکان اٹھنا بیٹھنا وہ سب اپنی حالت پہ ہو اس میں کوئی کمی نہ ہو کوئی نقص نہ ہو بس یہ کہ جہاں چھوٹا کیا جا سکتا ہے یعنی قرآت چھوٹی کر دی تو وہاں حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم چھوٹی کر دیا کرتے تھے to make the salah light and still be perfect this means that the qiraat is short and all the arkan the sujood the qiyam the qu'ud the jalsa all those things are performed perfectly and properly an abhi hurayra qal qal rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tubadiru al-imam idha kabbara fakabbiru wa idha qala wala al-dhalneen faqulu amin wa idha raka'a farka'u وَإِذَا قَالَ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ فَقُولُوا وَاللَّهُمَ رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدِ حضر ابو حریر رضی اللہ عنہ سے روایت ہے کہ رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اشارت فرمایا کہ لوگوں امام پر سبقت نہ کرو جب وہ اللہ اکبر کہے تو تم اللہ اکبر کہو جب وہ ولد ظالین کہے تو تم آمین کہو اور جب وہ رکو کرے تو تم رکو کرو اور جب وہ سمع اللہ لمن حمدہ کہے تم اللہ مربنا لکا الحمد کہو 
It is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that people, O oh people, do not go ahead of the Imam. When he says, when he says Allahu Akbar, then you say Allahu Akbar. When he says Waladhalin, then you say Ameen. And when he does ruku, you do ruku. And when he says Sami Allah wa Hamidah, then you say Allahumma Rabbana lakal hamd. Masnadi Bazaar me had a hurrah of the Allah who and he gave away it. Just before my guy here, Kijoshos Imam Sepele Ruku Yasaj Jesus or Tatahe, Uski Peshani Shatan Kihad mehe, or woe say Sakaratahe. Or Huzur Akram Salah and Salam says, He Bukhari Muslim me, who read the Allah who and he revived the Miltihe, Kabne Felmaya Kijoshos Imam Sepele Ruku Yasaj Jesus or Tatahe, Usko Darna Chahi, Mabada, Uskasar Gade Kasana Gadiajai. It is in Masnadi Bazaar narrated from Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu an that that person who raises their head in ruku' or sajda before the Imam, then their forehead is in the hand of Shaitan and the Shaitan makes them do it. And it is narrated from Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, quoted in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said that that person who raises their head before the Imam from ruku' or sajda, they should fear Allah, lest their head is made like that of a donkey. An Ali Yu Muad ibn Jabalin, Rodiallahu an Huma Kala, Kala Rasulullah, he sold the law, who Ali he was seldom, Ida Ata Hadukumus Salata or Imam Ala Halin, Felyosna Kama Yosna ul Imam. Had Ali or Had Maad ibn Jabal, the law, and said, I take a Sulakam Salah, he sold him Shatra Maya, he jumped to Missago in a maskiliai or Imam Kisi Halmeho. تو آنے والے کو چاہیے کہ جو امام کر رہا ہو وہی کرے It is narrated by Sayyidina Ali and Ma'ad ibn Jabal رضی اللہ عنہ They narrated that the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم has said that when one of you comes to join the salah and imam is in some situation then they should do the same thing as that which imam is doing عن ابی حریرہ قال قال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اذا جئتم الى الصلاة ونحن سجود فسجدو ولا تعدو شیعا وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَكْعَةً فَقَدْ أَدْرَكَ الصَّلَاةِ حضر ابو حریر رضی اللہ عنہ سے روایت تھے کہ رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اشارت فرمایا کہ جب تم نماز کو آؤ اور ہم سجدے میں ہو تو تم سجدے میں شریک ہو جاؤ اور اس کو کچھ شمار نہ کرو اور جس نے امام کے ساتھ رکوع پا لیا اس نے نماز یعنی وہ رکت پا لی نماز کی وہ رکت پا لی Hadha Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه has narrated the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that when you come for salah and we are in sajda then you join us in sajda and do not count it and if somebody finds that person who finds ruku with the imam he has found or that person has found the rakat that salah rakat of salah so the few things that should be mentioned under all these hadiths one is the station of imam he has been made imam to be followed and out of our negligence or if you are in a hurry uh, we should not proceed the Imam we should not go ahead of him if the last two hadiths are about joining the Salah if somebody comes late and the Jamaat has already started then if they join the Imam in Ruku or before Ruku then they should count that as their Raka otherwise they will not count it as their Raka if the Imam has risen from the Ruku. If somebody comes and finds even a very small time in Ruku with the Imam, their Rakat will be counted. But if they say, they, they're saying the Takbir Tahrima, while the Imam has already got up from the Ruku, and then even if they go in Ruku, they will not find that Rakat. Sometimes our women folk complain that we do not have any TV screens, alhamdulillah. We do not have any translucent screen where they could see what's going on on the men's side, which is uh, a protection from a lot of fitan, alhamdulillah. So if they come and the salah is already going on, then what they should do is that if they get a clear idea of where the imam is, they should join the jama'ah. Otherwise, they can just pray on their own. عن ابي هريره ان رجلا دخل المسجد ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جالس في ناحيه المسجد فصلى ثم جاء فسلم عليه فقال وعليك السلام ارجع فصلي 
فَإِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَلِّي فَرَجَعَ فَصَلَّى ثُمَّ جَاءَ فَسَلَّمَ فَقَالَ عَلَيْكَ السَّلَامُ اِرْجِعْ فَصَلِّي فَإِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَلِّي فَقَالَ فِي الثَّالِثَةِ أَوْ فِي الَّتِي بَعْدَهَا عَلِّمْنِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَقَالَ إِذَا قُمْتَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَأَسْبِغِ الْوُضُوءَ ثُمَّ اسْتَقْبِلِ الْقِبْلَةَ فَكَبِّرْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَأْ بِمَا تَيَسَّرَ مَعَكَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ ثُمَّ ارْكَعْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ رَاكِعًا ثُمَّ ارْفَعْ حَتَّى تَسْتَوِيَ قَائِمًا ثُمَّ اسْجُدْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ سَاجِدًا ثُمَّ ارْفَعْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ جَالِسًا ثُمَّ اسْجُدْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ سَاجِدًا ثُمَّ ارْفَعْ حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ جَالِسًا وفي رواية ثم ارفع حتى تستوي قائمة ثم افعل ذلك في صلاتك كلها هذا أبو هريرة رضي الله عن سلوية هيك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نرشاد في المعيا ایک ایسے شخص سے جو نماز پڑھنے آیا حضور اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مسجد میں ایک جانب تشریف فرما تھے ایک شخص مسجد میں آیا اس نے نماز پڑھی اس کے بعد حضور اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوا اور سلام عرض کیا آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے سلام کا جواب دیا اور پھر اس سے فرمایا کہ پھر جا کر نماز پڑھو تم نے ٹھیک نماز نہیں پڑھی وہ واپس گیا اور اس نے پھر سے نماز پڑھی پھر آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوا اور سلام عرض کیا آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے سلام کا جواب دیتے ہوئے پھر فرمایا کہ تم جا کے پھر نماز پڑھو تم نے ٹھیک نماز نہیں پڑھی اس آدمی نے تیسری مرتبہ یا اس کے بعد والی مرتبہ میں عرض کیا کہ حضرت مجھے سکھا دیجئے اور بتا دیجئے کہ میں کس طرح نماز پڑھوں حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے شاہد فرمایا کہ جب تم نماز پڑھنے کا ارادہ کرو تو پہلے خوب اچھی طرح حضور کرو پھر قبلے کی طرف نہ رخ کرو پھر تکبیر تحریمہ کے ساتھ نماز شروع کرو اس کے بعد جو قرآن تمہیں یاد ہو اور تمہیں پڑھنا آسان ہو وہ پڑھو اور بعض روایت میں ہے کہ حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ سورہ فاتحہ پڑھو اس کے سوا جو چاہو پڑھو پھر قرآت کے بعد رکوع کرو یہاں تک کہ مطمئن اور ساکن ہو جاؤ رکوع میں پھر رکوع سے اٹھو یہاں تک کہ سیدھے کھڑے ہو جاؤ پھر سجدہ کرو یہاں تک کہ مطمئن اور ساکن ہو جاؤ سجدے میں پھر اٹھو یہاں تک کہ مطمئن ہو کر بیٹھ جاؤ اور ایک راوی نے اس جملے کے بجائے یہ کہا ہے کہ پھر اٹھو یہاں تک کہ سیدھے کھڑے ہو جاؤ پھر اپنی پوری نماز میں یہی کرو And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the masjid. Then he prayed and came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to his salam and then said, Go back and pray again. You did not pray correctly. So this person went again and prayed again. And then he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to the salam and said that you go back and pray again. So this happened third or fourth time. Then he said, that, Ya Rasulullah, please teach me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet Wasallam mentioned a few things to him. Number one, when you intend to stand for salah, make wuzu very properly. Full complete wuzu. Then stand facing the qibla, then say takbir, Allahu Akbar, and then read the Quran. Now, there's different narrations. In, some, in one narration it is said that the Prophet Wasallam said that whatever Quran is easy for you, read it. In another narration it is said that the Prophet Wasallam said, read Fatiha and then whatever Quran is easy for you. So reading Fatiha is necessary in first Salah and there's a technical difference between where it is Wajib and where it is Sunnah but in every Rakah if somebody is praying alone they have to pray Fatiha and if they are praying behind Imam according to Ahnaf they don't have to pray they don't have to make any Qiraat in any Rakah they just have to stand behind and listen to the Imam Allah. Then after the Fatiha, they can recite whatever Quran they want to wish. They, they, it is easy for them. The smallest being three small ayat or one big ayah. Then do ruku until you have completely and calmly performed the ruku. So that would mean that don't go right in the ruku and come back right up, but go there and make a perfect ruku. And when you have stationed yourself. You know, situated yourself, found you know, calm or peacefully in the ruku when you fully made the ruku, then get back up. So those people who are basically touching all the tick, 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 tick marking, check marking all the arkan of salah, it is for our attention that we, when we are praying salah, we go and do some, you know, stop for a moment and then get up. Similarly, when you have risen up, then rise up so much that your back becomes straight. Allah, if the back does not become straight, then a wajib is missed. And then if a person does not, if a person forget, forgetfully does it and makes a dasahab, 
then their prayer is valid. But if they do it deliberately, or if they don't make sajda sahab even after having done it forgetfully, then their prayer becomes invalid. Same for sajda. When you go to sajda, do a proper sajda, full sajda. And a proper sajda is where the Prophet if I remember correctly, the Prophet has mentioned the points which need to be touching the ground when a person is making sajda. So the first point is the forehead, then the nose, then both the hands fully, the palms of the hands, then the knees, and then all the fingers of each foot also need to be touching the ground. So sometimes what happens is that if somebody is praying in a haste or carelessly, their feet are flying in the air. That is not permissible. The feet need to be on the ground and the fingers need to be facing the Qibla. So touched and bending like this. So facing the Qibla even in sujood. Then a person is supposed to sit up and sit up in a way Hatta tatma inna jalisan that you peacefully, calmly are sitting down. Then go into the next sajda. Then come back and in some narration it is said that you stand up and in some narration it is said that you uh, sit down. Depending on the rakah that the Prophet is explaining. And the Prophet said that this is how you should pray. This is how what you should do in all your salah, in, in your whole salah. And this is ta'adil or justice, doing justice to all the parts of salah. And this is a wajib. According to most ulama, this is wajib. If somebody does not do it properly, especially after ruku and after sajda, and if somebody does not do it, then the salah becomes invalid unless somebody has done it forgetfully and made sajda sahab. Has Hakim al Muhammad Maharaj Shaykh Thanvi Rahimahullah has written that Ta'adil is lacking when the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lacking. If somebody loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they really like to stand in salah and they like to uh, prolong their salah, which was the case of Sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that as Ameen ya Allah as well. Uh, but even if somebody does not feel like praying properly, when they are starting their farz at least, in their wajibat, they should make it a point, they should tell themselves that this is the most important thing that I'm ever doing in my whole day. So this is something that I need to really do properly and take your time and pray salah. The other thing that you should keep in mind is that the common reason why people do not pray properly is uh, when they are thinking about something ahead of salah, when they are thinking about what they have to do after salah. So when we stand for salah, we should try to forget about everything else and say that this is my salah, this is, my, uh, this is, this is what I'm doing right now. So we'll read two more hadiths tonight, inshallah, which are kind of long, and we'll uh, just read them. They're self-explanatory. Uh, and then, inshallah, make dua. There is a book, a very small booklet compiled by Hazrat Sheikh Pulislam of the Taqeeb Swani Sahib, Nawazi Sunnat Ke Mutabe Padhiye. It is also translated into English, and we have copies here. I really recommend that everybody reads it, and read it like a workbook. So read it, read a line, and think about your salah, practice it. And it's a very good handbook that briefly uh, tells us in a very direct, clear terms what are the mistakes that people usually make. An Aisha said, "Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yastafthu al-salat bil-takbir wal-qira'ah bil-hamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa kana idha raka'a lam yushkhis ra'sahu wa lam yusawibhu, walakin bayna dalik. Wa kana idha rafa'a ra'sahu min al-ruku'i lam yasjud." حتى يستوي قائما وكان إذا رفع رأسه من السجدة لم يسجد حتى يستوي جالسا وكان يقول في كل ركعتين التحية وكان يفترش رجله اليسرى وينصب رجله اليمنى وكان ينهى عن عقبة الشيطان وينهى عن أن يفترش وينهى أن يفترش الرجل 
ذراعيه افتراش السبع وكان يختم وكان يختم الصلاة بالتسليم هذا عائشة الصديقة رضي الله عنها سلوية تكرى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تكبير التحريم سنة ما شروع فرماته ثي وقراءة كأغاز الحمد لله رب العالمين سكرته ثي وجب أن يكون من جاته تو سر مبارک کو نہ تو اوپر کی جانب اٹھاتے اور نہ نیچے کی جانب جھکاتے بلکہ درمیانی حالت میں رکھتے اور جب رکوع سے سر مبارک اٹھاتے تو سجدے میں اس وقت تک نہ جاتے جب تک کہ سیدھے نہ کھڑے ہو جاتے اور سجدے سے سر مبارک اٹھاتے تو جب تک بالکل سیدھے نہ بیٹھ جاتے دوسرا سجدہ نہیں فرماتے تھے اور ہر دو رکعت پر تحیات پڑھتے تھے اور اس وقت اپنے بائیں پاؤں کو نیچے بچھا لیتے اور دائیں پاؤں کو کھڑا کر لیتے تھے اور عقبت الشیطان کی طرح بیٹھنے سے منع فرماتے تھے عقبت الشیطان کی طرح بیٹھنے سے منع فرماتے تھے اور اس بات سے بھی منع فرماتے تھے کہ آدمی سجدے میں اپنی باہیں یعنی کلائیاں کوہنیوں تک زمین پر رکھے جس طرح کی درندے اپنی کلائیاں اپنی کلائیاں زمین پر بچھا کے بیٹھتے ہیں اور آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ کہہ کر نماز ختم فرمایا کرتے تھے Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, Sahira Mutahra radiallahu anha, she has said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start the salah with takbir tahreema and would start the recitation of Quran with alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And when he would go in the ruku, his head, his noble head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would neither be raised upwards nor lowered too much, but right in the middle. So this would mean that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do ruku, his back will be like this and his head will also be in the same, in the same level. Neither too high nor too low, but in the same level. <coughs> and when he would raise his head from the ruku, he will not go into sajda until he would have stood erect, straight. And when he would raise his head from the sajda, he will not go into the next sajda until he would have sat erect with the back straight. And would read a tahiyat on every two rakat. And when he would sit, he would spread his left foot and sit over it and would make his right foot stand and would prohibit to sit in two situations. There's different hadith that have mentioned it. One is Uqbatu Shaitan, and the hadith it is mentioned as Iqa'ul Kalb, like animals or like uh, Shaitan would do. And what is that sitting? Ulama have said that. The hadith continues that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would complete the salah with Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. And the hadith of Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah or Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah is a barakat. Some people have seen that when they are completing the salah, they say Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah is a barakat. It's not like that. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. That's it. This is the sunnah. The kind of sitting that the Prophet Sallallahu has prohibited is two kinds of things that the Prophet Sallallahu has prohibited. When once one is where you are sitting and both your feet are standing and your fingers are facing the qibla, but both your feet are, are standing when you are sitting in the time in the in the in the uh, time of tahiyat. That is strictly prohibited. The Prophet Sallallahu has uh, shunned it in a very strong term. And the other one is that in sajda, a person is supposed to touch only their palms, not the uh, wrist, nor the forearm. This is like dogs do, the Prophet ﷺ said. So this is also very prohibited. In sajda, only the palms should be touching, not the wrist, nor the forearm. And of course, these prohibitions are only for that person who is able to do it. If somebody has a body type or if somebody is very, you know, has some excuse, valid excuse, then of course they have an exception. Another hadith that tells us about the Salah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, عن أبي حميد السعيدي 
قال في نفر من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا أحفظكم لصلاة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأيته إذا كبر جعل يديه حذاء منكبيه وإذا ركع أمكن يديه من ركبتيه ثم حصر ظهره فإذا رفع رأسه استوى حتى يعود كل فقار مكانه فإذا سجد وضع يديه غير مفترش ولا قابضهما واستقبل بأطراف رجليه القبلة فإذا جلس في الركعتين جلس على رجله رجله اليسرى ونصب اليمنى فإذا جلس في الركعة الآخرة قدم رجله رجله اليسرى ونصب الأخرى وقعد على مقعدته أدب حميد السعيدي رضی اللہ عنہ سے روایت ہے کہ انہوں نے صحابہ کرام کی ایک جماعت کے سامنے فرمایا کہ مجھے رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نماز یعنی اس کی تفصیلات آپ سب لوگوں سے زیادہ یاد ہیں پھر آپ نے فرمایا کہ میں نے آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو دیکھا ہے نماز شروع کرتے ہوئے جب آپ تکبیر کہتے تھے تو اپنے دونوں ہاتھ اٹھا کر مونڈوں تک لے جاتے اور جب رکوع میں جاتے تو اپنے دونوں ہاتھوں سے گھٹنوں کو مضبوطی سے پکڑ لیتے پھر اپنی کمر کو پوری طرح موڑ دیتے اور بالکل سیدھی برابر کر دیتے پھر جب رکوع سے سر مبارک اٹھاتے تو بالکل سیدھے اس طرح کھڑے ہو جاتے کہ ریڑھ کی ہڈی کا ہر جوڑ اپنی ٹھیک جگہ پر آ جاتا پھر جب آپ سجدے میں جاتے تو اپنے دونوں ہاتھ زمین پر اس طرح رکھ دیتے کہ نہ تو ان کو زمین پر بچھا لیتے اور نہ ان کو سکیڑ لیتے مطلب یہ کہ آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سجدے کی حالت میں دونوں ہاتھوں کو سکیڑ نہیں لیتے تھے بلکہ آگے بڑھا کر اپنے چہرے کے مقابل دائیں بائیں رکھ لیتے تھے لیکن کلائیاں اور کوہنیاں زمین سے الگ اور اٹھی رہتی تھیں اور پاؤں کی انگلیوں کا رخ سجدے میں قبلے کی جانب ہوتا تھا پھر جب دو رکعت پڑھ کے آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تحیات کے لیے بیٹھتے تو دائیں پاؤں کو کھڑا فرما لیتے اور باؤں بائیں پر بیٹھ جاتے پھر جب آخری رکعت پڑھ کر آپ قاعدہ اخیرہ فرماتے تو اس طرح بیٹھتے کہ دائیں پاؤں کو کھڑا کر لیتے اور بائیں پاؤں کو اس کے نیچے سے آگے کی جانب نکال دیتے اور اپنی سرینوں پر بیٹھ جاتے اس طرح بیٹھنے کو تورک کہتے ہیں حدب حمید سعیدی رضی اللہ عنہ حضرت نیریج دے پرائیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے سٹیٹ آف دے پریئر دے پرائیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی سیٹ تو ایک گروپ آف صحابہ دے آئی ریمیمبر دے صلاح دے پرائیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مور دن آل آف یو وین دے پرائیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وڈ سی تکبیر تحریمہ بیسکلی ہی وڈ ریز ہیز ہینز تو دے لیول آف ہیز شولڈرز صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم این دیس ڈیفرن نیریشنز تو دیس ایفیکٹ The combination of these, some narrations mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ used to raise his hands up to the level of his ear lobes. So the combination is very easy. Some Sahaba have reported that up to the level of shoulders. Some have reported that up to the ear lobes. It's basically the same. If you raise your hands like this, the top part reaches the ear lobes and the lower part is to the level of your uh, shoulders. وَإِذَا رَكَعَ أَمْكَنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنْ رُكْبَتَيْهِ And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do ruku' he would hold firmly his kneecaps, his knee bone. So this is the way that we, when we go on ruku' we spread out our fingers and hold our uh, knee firmly. And <coughs> would lower his back, you know, bend his back fully and would make it basically parallel to the ground. The way to do it is that you keep your hands straight and you hold your knees firmly. If you do that, if your hands are straight and you're holding your knees firmly, automatically your back becomes parallel to the ground. And when the Prophet ﷺ would raise his hand, head from the rukur, then he would stand erect, fully erect, in a way that all the joints or all the little vertebrae, all the uh, small bones in the backbone, they would come back, they would be straight. Then when the Prophet ﷺ would go in sajda, he would put both his hands in, on the ground Allah, in a way that he would not retract them but and not extend them a lot, but would keep them right to the right and to the left of his noble face wasallam. But his wrists and his elbows will be raised from the ground and the fingers the toes will be facing the qibla the fingers in the foot they would be facing the qibla and when he would sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
have completed two rakat, he would sit for a tahiyat, he would make his right hand, right, right foot stand, and he would spread his left foot and sit on it. And in the last rakat, so this hadith mentions uh, something ta called tawarruk. Tawarruk is a permissible way of sitting, but the regular way of sitting is of the Prophet as mentioned in the hadith of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, was to make his right foot stand and left foot spread and sit on it. But tawarruk is when the Prophet would sit on his backside, not on a foot, and the right foot would be standing, and the left foot would be So the right foot will be like this, the left foot will be ahead of that. And the Prophet ﷺ would be sitting on his uh, backside. This is called tawarruk and this is also permissible. But this was, this was not the routine of the Prophet ﷺ. The routine was to sit, which was mentioned in, uh, just like the same in the second rakah, uh, mentioned in the hadith of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. And Hazrat has an explanation that this may be when the Prophet ﷺ uh, wanted to show to the Ummah that there is ease that if somebody is really tired or somebody has a problem with their back and they are having a hard time sitting in the proper manner then they can also sit in this way which is called Tawarruq Allahumma laka alhamdu alaka shukru Rabbana adhalamna anfusana wa illam tawfilana wa tarhamna ala nakuna anna minal khasirin abbi gfir wa rahamu wa antakhiru wa rahimin la ilaha illallah alhalim alkareem subhanallah rabbil arsh alazim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen ya allah please accept our gathering here ya allah please accept our listening and reading the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam each one of his words that you have declared as a wahi ya allah ya allah we say it here and we read it and ya allah with the spirit to gain your love ya allah with the purpose to ya allah become close to you ya allah you please accept it from us amin ya rabbil alameen ya allah please forgive us Ya Allah, whatever sins we have committed in the past, Ya Allah, those that we committed in pri private or public, those that we committed and have forgotten about, Ya Allah, you are Alim and Khabir, and Ya Allah, you remember everything, and nothing is hidden from your knowledge. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please forgive all our secret sins and all our public sins. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, in the future, Ya Allah, protect us from that moment where we disobey you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us faithful servants of you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, that moment in which we disobey you, Ya Allah, is the worst of our lives, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you always, always protect us from that, Ya Allah, unfortunate moment. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, and if we commit sin, and Ya Allah, if we disobey you, Ya Allah, make us turn back to you. Ya Allah, make us turn back to you. Ya Allah, make us turn back to you with Tawbah, with Istighfar. Ya Allah, and make us your own. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, accept our Tawbah, accept our Istighfar. Ya Allah, grant us the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, grant us spiritual and physical nearness to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ya Allah, make us accepted slaves in the court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please accept our efforts of deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us from the, Ya Allah, taunting and Ya Allah, other, Ya Allah, troubles of everyone who is doing it, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, protect us from the shar and the fitna of others and our insiders, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you always, always accept us in your path, Ya Allah, and keep us steadfast, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, include us in your maqbooleen, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyu al-aleem, wa tu'alayna inna kanta tawabu al-raheem, wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi sayyidina wa mawlana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-ma'een, Amin bi rahmatika ya 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 r